So, here's the thing. I was going to try to do an overhead shot with this video. The problem is I don't have the equipment. So I was trying to kind of cobble together a way to do that using an unbelievable array of ridiculous things that were supposed to help me, like a footstool where I was gonna put my camera and then have it kind of over the top of my sewing table, not high enough and definitely not sturdy enough. Um, I have a Gorilla tabletop which will bear the weight of my Canon XA11 camera, but the footstool was having none of it. It was like, I will pitch this camera to the floor in a heartbeat if you try it. So I was trying to get the camera to actually orient to the pattern and it wasn't happening. And I really almost said, eh, forget it. I'm just gonna have to do this another time. But then I thought, you know, other people go through this. It's not just me. So I fiddled around and I decided to turn the pattern. There's the leg of the um, footstool there. But so I moved my pattern rather than trying to move the camera. Uh, that, was, that was just craziness. The whole point of this though is that the fabric arrived that I plan to use for the pattern. Now there I'm trying to describe the overhead boom for my camera. I've seen a few. I thought it would be a great idea. I'm still kind of kicking around a different idea. But um, in any case, my, the, the reason that I decided to go ahead and show you guys this is to let you know that I am working on ways to make these videos a little bit more visible. I know that sometimes I tend to float out of the frame and I want to try to get it where that's not happening. Um, anyway, let me just quickly tell you that the pattern with the young lady on the right, not that one that I was just pointing at, but the other one, the plaid, that's the shirt view that I will be making. Not in a plaid fabric, but in a stripe. And you'll see in a moment. And there are other things that go with that particular view that we will discuss um, probably on camera, less, less voiceover and more real time. But there, that's, it's a great pattern. So far I've read through the instructions several times. I, as I've said, there will be a few things that you're probably either briefly familiar with, you might have a ton of experience with, or you may have never heard of it. At least one is rather esoteric. So my main point in bringing that up is I don't want anybody to be afraid of giving it a go, but I would welcome you the opportunity to watch and maybe figure it out with me rather than along with me. We'll just I mean, I know what we're doing. I've seen it in ready to wear and I have done it a few times, but I've not filmed it before. So if you've, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm being so cagey about it. It's just I don't want anybody to be put off and not do it. For, for the XA11, I want an overhead and I need to be able to reach the on off. If I can't reach the on off, then of course I have to have a remote. So it's all just part of a process and kind of the, if you give a mouse a cookie mentality. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to stop babbling and get to the package opening. I might be a little bit concerned about how this will look and then I won't be able to replicate the opening of this package, but this is the way I'm going to do it today. And then if it's awful, I won't ever do it again until I get the boom. Um, that's, that's really, really a goal for me is to get that set up. I just think for a sewing video, the having something like that in place is a, a much better deal. Okay, so this is a rather hefty package. It feels, I'm using my non, ooh, my, I'm just cutting through my camera cord. 
my non-fabric scissors. I use these almost exclusively for opening packages now. And I need to get this where you can see that I am actually opening. I'm not just pretending. Okay. Oh. Oh, so it's the... Oh, ah, yes. Lovely, lovely. It's both of them. All right, so let's start this. This is what I think is a green ticking. It doesn't say... Okay, so it's a beautiful, beautiful fabric. The newer ticking fabrics are so soft. One layer of this fabric is almost like gauze, the way it feels, or, or even a linen. A very linen-like or a gauze-like feeling to it. And I have always been very particularly fond of the way that ticking almost looks like an embroidered stripe. I don't know if that's even picking up. But you can see little tiny lines between each of the darker blue lines. So it looks like, like a half cross stitch. Okay, so you might have noticed that this particular version right here, which is view B on this Simplicity pattern, has a different uh, fabric for the placket the inside of the collar and the inside of the cuffs. So I will also try to remember to link these fabric purchases below in this description box. I got both on Amazon so it was worth it to me to go and get this off of Amazon and I thought I really want something floral with the stripe so I looked and I looked and I looked and I almost gave up and then I found this. So I want to see, and I was trying to do a comparison on the computer, and I thought after spending far too much time um, cutting, pasting, copying, trying to adjust, blah, 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 I said, you know what, I'm just going to order it anyway. And if it doesn't work for this, I'll still have a really cute fabric for something else. So we're going to, it's a cotton, it's a very, very nice cotton. It's not Liberty, but it feels so wonderful. It is a lovely, cute, it's a, uh, the print is just adorable and suits me to a T, but the fabric itself is way nicer than I thought it would be for the price I paid. I mean, it does. I know I say this feels like Liberty of London all the time, but this really does feel like Liberty of London. It's just got that that lawn, cotton lawn feel. So here is what I'm going to do. I ordered a yard of this, and I honestly cannot recall how much of this I bought. Let's I think it's really cute. There is a tone in the very back background of this dark, dark, dark blue that's in the stripes and then the periwinkle blue is kind of bouncing off of these stripes. So the placket would run this way on the shirt. Let me get this tucked. So that's kind of what it would look like if it were made into the placket. This is like, you know, trying on a, a wig to see what your hairstyle would look like. You don't have to make the commitment to cut your hair. <laughs> but I do think that's really cute. Today I am going to work on getting this pattern cut out. And as a reminder, it's probably two seconds ago, but this is the fabric for the uh, collar inside lining placket, both the buttonhole and button, and the cuffs, which I think is adorable. And this is the fabric for the main body of the shirt. 
It is a navy blue ticking that is super lightweight. I think it'll make a really cute shirt to wear through more than one season based on the color and the design. So the next thing I plan to do after this is a pullover jumper, just a popover. Um, for in the US it's a dress, not a sweater. And I'm going to probably make three, one for myself that I can wear this under, and then one for each of my two daughters. We, when we went shopping in Edmonds um, a couple weekends ago, we popped into a little boutique store that I swear I cannot remember the name of, but they were just flooded with these adorable linen jumpers. Just pull over your head and wear. They were so cute. So, we kind of got to talking about it and I think I'm going to try to make them. The hardest part is finding a pattern and I'm thinking I almost maybe don't need a pattern. I think what I could do is just take a pullover shirt, extend it however long said wearer would want it to be. I want mine to be all the way down, as I have said before, to the ground. Um, and I, I don't know if my daughters want theirs to be a maxi length, a midi length, or a mini length. Uh, we'll have to talk about that, but that makes it a little bit easier if I'm just going to kind of make a pattern up. The other option is buy a pattern that has a range of sizes and then just kind of modify. I did find one um, that I'll show you if I go ahead and get it. The issue I have is that it runs the smallest size is an 8 and my youngest daughter is a 4 and and then it just runs all the way up to way past either, any of our sizes. So I can modify, I can bring it down and shorten it if I need to or lengthen it if I need to. Um, and I, if I remember correctly, the, the jumpers that we saw at that little boutique had, I'm thinking it had a ruffle around the bottom and it was sewn wrong sides together so that there was like a little um, chenille type edge at the bottom where the ruffle was sewn on. I'm not 100% sure about that. I'll have to consult with my daughters and find out if I'm remembering it correctly or if I dreamed that part, but I still think that would be kind of cute. So anyway, and they were just kind of a, I think, either a boat neck or a square neck, you know, with just your basic shoulders. You just pull it over your head and wear it. It doesn't have shape and I don't think it even had a, you know how a lot of jumpers have like either a button band in the back that you can button to kind of pull it in or on the sides for the same thing. I don't think these had either of those. I don't think they even had pockets. So anyway, it's just kind of a, I need to go to the store, let me throw this jumper on kind of thing. So that is the plan. And my thoughts were I wanted to be able to wear this underneath my jumper. So in the fall, um, I'm not a big sleeveless person. I don't like to go without having sleeves. So that would be perfect, this right here. Okay, so to prepare, I know I'm planning to make view C. So view C will require... I'll just write down those the numbers that I need. And it looks like some of these have already been cut out. I forgot about that. Okay, so I will reorganize these a little bit.
and we're going to look at the pattern for a little clarity. And if I remember correctly, this is all in, I've got Spanish and maybe French, no, just a blank, half blank. So this is a page that correlates to some of the instructions in the original um, three, four pages maybe. And um, it is a supplement, I'm going to guess that helps explain some of the steps in this part in Spanish. The entire um, supplement is written in Spanish as it clearly states right there. So I won't need this but it's always nice to have something like that. Okay, I think I'm going to zoom you down just a little. I'm trying to use the tripod at its highest for some diversity of shots, but it may not be working for me. All right. Okay. So as you know, it is Simplicity 1538R5, and it is a multi-size pattern. This one is from size 14 US to size 22 US and it has a total of 14 pieces for each of these um, iterations of this shirt right here. And on the back it says that it's great to use flannel, gingham, laundered cottons, batiks, broadcloth, calico, chambray, just a whole line of fabric all the way to silk linen um, and D you could make apparently in a double Georgette so a soft lightweight linen and linen blends would also work well for view D it has a lot of gathers the extra fabric needed to match plaids stripes or one-way design um, is obvious because of the side seams um, the front, you don't want to have your your plaid like they've got this girl in a plaid. Maybe you can tell the plaids do line up across the front of the shirt. And sometimes it requires extra fabric because you have to kind of, you know, fiddle with it to get it to perfectly line up. While I wait for the fabric to dry, it has been washed and it's in the dryer, it's almost dry. I wanted to uh, mark these pattern pieces with something. I, I didn't initially start out thinking I would do red. However, I do like the contrast between this beigey brown color and the black lines and the red ink. It looks kind of nice. And today is Tuesday. It is July the 6th and we're going to start on the shirt. I had originally decided that I was going to um, discuss the pattern pieces and go through that big rigmarole and then I changed my mind. So here is what I'm doing instead. I already have all of the pattern pieces that I need for the shirt cut out and marked. I have colored in the numbers with my red ink so that I can see them at a glance. I'm kind of weird that way. I want to save as much time as I possibly can when I'm sewing and I don't want to have to look for pattern pieces. I think I spent so much time struggling with that issue where you just have wads and wads of this pattern paper and I never could figure out a way to keep it neat and tidy until I decided to fold my pattern pieces a certain way and I've recently got into the habit of using either a red ink which I like I love that contrast on the pattern paper and with the black ink some patterns are printed 
in a really dark blue. This just happens to be one that has black ink. But you, if you want to um, try it for yourself, you could use any shade of ink that you want. Uh, I would uh, go ahead and color that in and then press it to kind of help set the ink. Uh, you wouldn't want that coming off on your clothing or your fabric. And as you can see, while you're doing that, it does actually, you know, bleed onto things. So, okay, I have washed and dried the two fabrics that I will be using. They've washed up beautifully. This is just straight out of the dryer. I have not uh, pressed them. They've not been under the iron at all. And, I mean, this is a bit wrinkly, but it's not that bad. So I folded them uh, with the selvage on the long edge, and the cut edges are on either side. So they are the way I would have gotten them if I purchased from the uh, fabric store and had not washed them. So they're both folded that direct that way. And the other thing that we need to talk about are a few items that I do not have that I will have to get in order to complete this pattern. Okay, so friction ink will erase with the use of heat. So an iron, um, even a hair straightener. If you don't have an iron, you can use a hair straightener. Um, any kind of heat source that won't burn your fabric is completely okay to remove the, the main essence of this ink. There will be a binding ink left behind that can reappear if it gets cold. If this, after I've made this shirt, I pack it in a bag and go to Alaska during the winter time and it's cold, then I might have some little markings reappear. Okay, and time to cut.
take a piece of double sided tape and don't peel the white off. Just make a little dot of tape like so. And I don't cut this tape with my fabric scissors. But so I have this little tiny thing and I line it up with where that circle is. And in this case, it's right there, kind of between those daisies. Same thing right here, so I know it's straight. I've actually seen shirts that have been cut on almost the bias from the uh, when it's on a stripe like this. You just, honest to goodness, have to be careful.
Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I have placed an order for all of the items that I need to complete this shirt. They should arrive within the next few days and when they do, we'll dig right in and finish up sewing. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.